Hey friends, today's video I want to talk about containerization and I'm sure, I guess you could talk about, you could describe it as chunking, right? So it's not a new concept, but I like the phrase containerization and it comes from the book, The Box, which is about container shipping and how, you know, in the past shipping used to be, they just put all the goods on a ship, which was like all kinds of, I think they call it break bulk, whatever. It's just all kinds of nonsense, right? Just unstandardized uh, stuff that you have to carry into onto the ship and off the ship and so there were longshoremen whose jobs were to carry stuff on and off the ship and this would happen at every ship at every port all over the world and it was very tedious and costly and stuff would go missing that kind of thing and then around world war ii they invented uh, containers shipping containers standardized shipping containers and that tremendously reduced the cost of shipping because now you just move the containers onto the ship and off the ship and you know you can use cranes for that you can put the container directly on a truck or a train and it's just everything becomes simpler and i remember when you know so i used to write in a blog and i still blog but like at, at some point my twitter started to take off and i started tweeting more and more and it occurred to me that one of the things that i enjoyed about twitter is that tweets are like containerized thoughts, right? There is a form, a frame, right? Uh, back then it was 140 characters, now it's 280 characters, but there's a limit to how much you can put in each tweet. And this is a constraint that's actually very useful in a sense because it creates this containerized context, right? It's just this, this, this format that you operate in and it's like haikus are a kind of container, sonnets are a kind of container, by by keeping the form fixed you you kind of free yourself to experiment within the form without raising questions about you know the the choice of the framing choice right so which is an interesting thing to think about in relation to my previous video about against excessive homoge homogenization because homogenizing some amount of your form allows you to play with your content with your with the material in it pretty well and anyway I, I was thinking about containerization today not because of tweets but because of time like just kind of I'm thinking about the days and weeks and months and years of my life and what I've done every month and so on I started a thread last year in I think January of last year where every month at the end of the month I would tweet whatever I remember doing that month right and a Twitter again there's 280 characters they allow you to put four pictures in it and so I try to pick four pictures that I think are most evocative, that, that remind me of, of whatever's going on. And I try to pick seven or eight things that were memorable, interesting. And so as a result, I can go back and see what I did in any month of 2020. And again, it's not perfect, but it's a pretty high resolution image or, or, or model of each month that can also sometimes help me, you know, when I look at it, I remember other things that I had not included in the tweet, just kind of by association. And I wish that I had 12 tweets for every year of my life, but I don't. I mean, I, I do have old tweets that I can kind of dig through, old blog posts and stuff. I can retrospectively, retroactively analyze and assemble what happened in my life back then. And I might do that, I think, at some point. I, I've been thinking recently that once I'm done with the book that I'm currently working on, I want to do like a personal history project. And I've attempted several personal history projects over the years and they all kind of, I started and then it kind of spiraled out of control a little bit and then I just stopped. And it is still useful that I started those times because now I can reference that material and kind of um, tinker with it, tweak it, pull stuff from it, reshape it. And it, you know, no work is ever wasted. All of it is relevant to what I'm trying to do. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to assemble a sort of easy to navigate personal history. And it's also so it's like things that I did and it's also things that happen in the world around me. And, and just I want to be able to navigate my life and navigate my history in a very skillful, fluid way. And I think there's something very powerful about that. I think there's something very interesting about that. Like it just makes life feel richer and more nuanced. Like there's more going on. And uh, yeah, so I guess I wanted to make this video mainly as an affirmation to myself that I want to 
continue to containerize my life. And again, these container, so how does this square with excessive homogenization? It's not everything, right? So it's it's really, it's like um, the containerized tweets are a, a, an aid, like a navigational aid or like a map, but the map is not the territory, right? And I don't intend to live my life in containers, but rather I containerize some thoughts so that I can access them easily and, and make sense of things easily and then I can get back to my life. Um, yeah, and you know, I'm thinking every, you know, every word, I can get pretty wooey about this, but like every word is a containerized concept, right? Or idea or just a, a bundle of associations. And every sentence is a kind of container. Every paragraph is a container of sentences and every chapter in a book is a container of paragraphs every book is a container of chapters every library is a container of books right and um, yeah i'm just getting a lot of value right now from reflecting again on how my life is structured and what areas are unstructured in a way that is unhelpful you know so i i don't like calendars and schedules like i have like childhood trauma from that stuff and uh but i think i have kind of um avoided them too much too long and as a result you know if you one of my old riffs that i used to play with that i kind of abandoned for a while but now i'm returning to is um if you don't have a, a schedule or if you don't have you know if you don't deliberately make your choices then your choices will be made for you or like you know it, you, when you choose not to choose like whatever out if you don't have good habits then like whatever else you're doing that typically becomes habitual nobody's really good at being completely random all the time right like you you if you don't design your routine you end up having a routine that is designed by your impulses and by your just knee-jerk things no plan reactionary and your reactive stuff is is a function of like your biology or your whatever you know things beyond your conscious control and I am trying to be more explicit about my life and I'm trying to, I don't like how many of my days have been just bleary, blurry, kind of, I don't know why I did that day, uh, I was on Twitter for a while, I, get, for, I, was, I was on Twitter for most of it, which is not a bad thing, I don't think it's a bad thing that I spend a lot of time on Twitter, I think it's a bad thing if I spend a lot of time on Twitter and I don't know what I did that day, even if I did stuff, you know, it's it like... It's tragic because sometimes I do a bunch of work that will only realize its value much later on. But in the moment, I don't feel good and I feel bad when I'm trying to go to bed and I can't sleep because I feel like I didn't do any work. And the reason I feel that I didn't do any work is not that I didn't do any work, but it's that I didn't contextualize the work that I did and kind of present it to myself. And you know, this is what people do in, in, in organizations, right? In companies, you have all hands meetings and you have monthly stand-ups or whatever you have you present your work to each other and i am learning that it's also valuable to present your work to yourself it's valuable to to, to structure your narrative to to remind yourself of the work that you're doing especially if you know i've said i recently made a video about failure and it's like if you're constantly failing it's gonna feel like shit unless you know what the failure is in service of right what you're working towards and you want to measure your progress towards the thing that you're working towards. Even if the thing that you're working towards, it's not necessarily the final goal. And if progress is non-linear or whatever, like even if it's just, I spent an hour working on my book today. An hour a day working on your book feels less, um, you know, that, that way when there's no progress, no tangible progress being made of it at the end of it, I can at least go to bed knowing that I tried. Right, and maybe there's a way to solve this kind of discomfort by being okay with not doing anything, and so so like you can always there are many, many levels at which you can try to solve a problem, but uh, if if I I don't think I'm gonna be able to solve that soon. So and I would like to be able to solve this, you know. So it's like you can build your capacity to solve the problem in any any different part of the problem, and you know I have time right, in life. I can I can solve this first and then figure out how to solve that. And even if the other way around may be potentially better, I, I, I think doing the immediate thing makes more sense for me right now. Maybe I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong, I'll figure, I'll figure it out later on at some point, right? Let me know what it's like for you. How do you, how do you guys kind of uh, structure your lives? <laughs> Let me know. Done.